When a country depends on the diplomacy, the question of merit comes up. And now Kenyans are looking at the parliament today. The 13th parliament has threatened to impeach incompetent CSs. And now on the spot is CS Lunturi and CS Nakumincha. We'll be having legislators this morning on the morning prime to discuss further the next step for this country. Remember to talk to us at KTN News across all the social media platforms. You can find me at Doris Anki on X, Anki Doris Umbat on Facebook. Also, taking center stage as much as politics, remember today is Siesta Tuesday. So Siesta Mambo Ya Politics right here this morning. Be part of the conversations all the way to 9 a.m. We'll also bring you some very key details, stories from the news desk. Perhaps you want to also bring in another side of the story on what the twists and turns in politics mean for you. Let's start with the papers this morning on what you expect on the dailies. On the standard, our own production right here at the Standard Media, united by fear factor. You're looking at political intrigues right there at the front page and so far, Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa and National Assembly Speaker Moses Wetangula held a meeting to discuss government agenda at a time the two leaders are under political pressure. Are they united by a fear factor? More of that on page six of the paper. In fact, political analyst voices just, of course, highlighted on the front page as well, saying, therefore, Gashagwa and Wetangula could be united by fear, informed by the very person who should be cautious to disorient 2022 political arithmetic. That's the main story this morning on The Standard, but also very key is just at the top of the paper, of course, the big sex trade in massage parlors, now an issue arising. Medics plan weekly protests on the national page four, and in the world news, you see Nigeria claims wanted crypto, uh, crypto boss in Kenya on the business page at 25. That's it for The Standard. However, Obiri rules Boston Marathon. Of course, congratulations are in order. Kenyans are proud once again in the world of athletics. Let's take a look at another key paper this morning. We're going to quickly look at the front page of the Daily Nation. Another very key uh, detail here, but you can see that now all eyes are on the KOTU. All eyes are on KOTU and as far as the Daily Nation is concerned, coming to your screen shortly, why Atwoli is under siege. Why Atwoli is under siege, of course, uh, right there is the image of uh, Atwoli. And uh, the Kotu boss sided with Azimio ahead of the 2022 polls. Cornered the question, combative veteran trade unionist Francis Atwoli is between a rock and a hard place, with things starting to align against him from a new push to halt private guards, Kotu deductions, and a bill seeking to end his long career to criticism over his lukewarm stance on workers' issues from an opposition he dumped after the 2022 elections. More of that on page four, but that is the main story this morning on the Daily Nation. But you can also see keenly wage bill crisis push for single payroll. A centralized payroll system for a public sector, or for all public sector rather, workers will help with out wastage through irregular multiple payments to individuals and ghost workers, several state agencies have proposed. But on matters weather, highlighted on the Daily Nations page four, heavy rains wreak havoc and unrelating downpours continue to wreak havoc across the country, leaving a trail of death, displacement and destruction of property. You are urged also this morning to keenly uh, look at environment, uh, observe your weather and stay vigilant in as far as the heavy rains are concerned. That's it for the Daily Nation this morning. Let's also look at some very other key papers this morning, including The Star. Now, if you grab a copy of The Star this morning, this is what you expect on the Daily, on the front page, on The Star. Matters politics coming in and governance also strongly highlighted on the front page of The Star this morning. Ruto tough choices start to bear fruit. Ruto tough choices start to bear fruit. The front page of the star coming to your screen shortly. We're looking at the paper review this morning. And a steady appreciation of the shilling has cut Kenya's debt by at least one trillion shillings. 
Following the economy closely and Kenyans also anticipating that the high cost of living and commodities will follow suit by going down. Better times, they now say, and as C named the world's best performing stock market in 2024. That is the front page of the Star Ruto Tough Choices start to bear fruit. Do you agree with some of these headlines this morning? And let us know your thoughts at KTN News across all the social media platforms. And the Kenya shilling to the US dollar, we're looking at 162 shillings as of January 2024, improved to 130 in April 2024. Also, price of maize flour has reduced from 220 shillings, according to the Star, as of June 2023, to 110 shillings in April 2024. The petrol prices have dropped from 217 uh, shillings as of November 2023 to 199 shillings in March 2024. Now, the price of sugar, that is a 2 kg of sugar, has reduced from 500 shillings as of August 2023 to 250 shillings in April 2024. The cost of electricity has gone down according to this analysis on the front page of the star. That is 50 kilowatts has reduced by six shillings as of March 2024. And the price of five liter cooking oil has dropped from 1,800 shillings as of December 2023 to 1,500 shillings in April 2024. That is a star uh, illustration of uh, what they are terming. Tough choices now bearing fruit. Do you also agree with uh, that headline? Let us know the exact, uh, you know, feeling at and on the ground. But it is also very important to acknowledge that as we have looked at most of these papers, that is the Standard, the Daily Nation and the Star, one thing that has taken center stage is different developments, including uh, politics and governance. And like I mentioned earlier on, all eyes are on the parliament in as far as governance is uh, concerned. So talk to us at KTN News across all social media platforms. But another very key paper to look at this morning is The People Daily. Let's quickly uh, move and transition to the front page of The People Daily. No more pay rights. There's a cash crunch and a missed raging strike by medics over remuneration. Government now says that there will be no salary increase for civil servants due to what it describes as hard economic times and wage bill, heavy wage bill. Now, remember the doctor strike is still at the center of the conversations. Now, also bringing uh, you up to speed is what members of parliament have raised eyebrows over, almost stumbling as incompetency. What we are now looking at is the government is also firm on the fact that there will be no more pay rise. You can also see at the, uh, above that story, matters education, primary school heads demanding promotion, more of that on the Newsbeat page for of the people daily. But also essentially for those who are watching us across uh, the world and understand the Kiswahili language, especially you in Kenya, let's take a look at this very key daily this morning, the front page of Taifa Leo. Let's take a look at the front page of the, uh, Taifa Leo this morning. Karata Fiche ya Madividi. Karata Fiche ya Madividi is what we are seeing this morning. Mudavadi ya onekana kucheza siyasa zake kwa tahadhari kubwa akijijiandaa kwa kura ya 2027 mudavadi yaonekana kucheza siasa zake kwa tahadhari kubwa akijiandaa kwa kura za 2027 serikali that is what they say baada ya mudavadi kudokeza nia ya chama cha ANC kuingia katika ndoa na UDA majuma kadhaa yaliyopita kisha viongozi wa chama wakakana baraza kuu la chama linapanga kujadili mada hiyo hiyo Still matters politics, I've taken it to the front page of Taifa Leo. In fact, another headline just below that, Nyani wateka ploti waiba kucharaza na kutu, uh, kutimua wapangaji. That is as far as a human wildlife conflict is concerned. But you also realize recently there was some compensation in the same regard. So that's pretty much it for Taifa Leo. But you have also seen on that front page matters UDA still taking center stage in as far as folding in uh, to in that particular order is concerned. Remember, we'll have our panelists also speak on the same as we look at how politics is unfolding, not only on the front pages, 
but later on in different perspectives. Let's close this with the Business Daily. Here's the front page of the Business, uh, business Daily. What we're looking at is big farms buying Kenya's carbon credits revealed. Big farms buying Kenya's carbon credits revealed. That's coming to your screen shortly. And Netflix, Apple, um, you know, Shell among multinationals are in Kenya. Some Kenya credits sold in compliance markets. Remember, climate change is a big conversation right now. It wasn't uh, so, you know, common in uh, Kenya, but came out to the light, especially after the African summit. Um, and uh, there's now so much conversation around it. So do grab a copy for the same, as this will also then trickle down to matters economy of uh, the country. There's need for policies, codes of conduct, and appropriate induction and ongoing communication with the staff. You will see more of that on page nine as far as how we want to shelf up and um, revive the economy is uh, concerned. Well, that's it for the Business Daily. And as far as the big firms buying Kenya's carbon credits revealed is concerned. Many thanks for joining us this morning for KTN Morning Prime. And as usual, your voice is the power, but the most powerful person is the most informed watching this morning. My name is Anki Doris Mbat, and I also want to this moment unveil our guests, at least so we can also hear their thoughts on one, two things developing this morning and just appreciating them purposing to be here quite early. Let me start by appreciating Honorable Owen Yabaya, who is the member of Parliament Kilifi North, the Habari Zasubwe. Nice to meet you here in the studio. <laughs> what is Kilifi saying? What, what are the constituents? Kilifi is about? okay. Kilifi, we are gearing in for planting season. Mm. We have a new program to regenerate our agriculture sector, especially planting coconuts mm. and uh, cashew nuts. Uh, we are also going into cotton uh, and sunflower and cassava. We want to have, uh, and, and maize, we want to have food, but also use the opportunity to generate uh, our economy of cash crops mm -hmm. uh, so, so that uh, the people now have money. It's been tough for the people in Kilifi for many years, but I think we have a reprieve. So tomorrow we gear up for the uh, Kenya Coconut Festival. All right. A festival of planting and replanting coconut uh, trees in, in, and to look at the value of the coconut tree. All so right. that is Kilifi. Indeed. And that's what's happening. I, I, I'm, I'm actually very interested if you guys are also vested or invested yes. in the fertilizer. Yes, yes, yes. And, and if it's affected, you know, this very ambitious, hardworking Kenyans. No, no the, the, the fake fertilizer, whatever its name is, uh, yes. has not reached Kilifi. We, we are safe and uh, uh, we, we have fertilizer and seeds All right. and uh, we are ready for the, for the planting season and the rains are doing very, very well. So food insecurity will probably be a thing of the past for, for, for Kilifi. So uh, I'm looking forward to supporting the farmers and the county government supporting the farmers. And my discussion with the president is that we need to invest more in agriculture Indeed. In, in Kilifi. Thank you very much for the yeah. opening remarks. We shall yes. delve deeper because I know they are watching as well. If yes. you have a different opinion yes. as by your member of parliament's remarks, do feel free to share with us at KTN News. Challenge them as much as you can, but also with us. And we're very pleased and honored to host you, Dr. Kanyuthia. I believe I got it right, Kanyuithia yes. Mutunga, Member of Parliament, Tigania West. Once again, it's very good to have you. Good morning. Thank you very much, Anki Doris. Yes. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you in this Good to space. see you. <laughs> yeah, we, we are happy as a people, Meru, because uh, we have received sufficient amount of rainfall. Uh, it is always a belief that after the El Nino, then follows La Nina, and it appears like La Nina is not coming soon. So. Uh, we are looking at another good year. And you know, good year in Kenya means a year that you have had enough rain. Uh, you look at what happened last year, mm. uh, the fertilizer subsidy program of the government, coupled with very good rains, gave us huge harvest. And uh, for the first time, we were able to produce enough food for ourselves. Actually, we bypassed the limit because we normally estimate uh, the food requirement by the number of bags of uh, maize that we, 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 we consume. Uh, the estimate is a bag of maize per person. Uh, that's the per capita consumption. So if we have 55 million and you get 55 million bags, we are safe, we are okay. Right. Last year, it's estimated that we got about 61, which was very, very good. Uh, the people of Meru are preparing land. They're actually already weeding. The crops have already, you know, sprouted. They have germinated. 
and uh, we are thanking God every moment because of the sufficient amount of rain. And we're also looking at, uh, uh, um, uh, we are happy with the plans that the government has to, 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 to harness, especially the amount of water that we have. If you look at uh, most parts of the country today, there's a lot of water running on the surface. In fact, uh, the night before last, Karen was a lake. Uh, you could hardly drive around. Uh, there was so much water from around 10 o'clock to yesterday in the evening. Still, there was a lot, of, right. water, a lot of water. Mm. So it means if we can harness this water and store it upstream, it's possible for us to grow a lot of crops downstream. And this is one of the areas that the government is looking at in terms of coming up with mega dams and earth dams and uh, basically surface runoff, which is really good for us. All right. It will help us produce more crops even when the, uh, the rains are not so much. So what we need is what is called sustainability. Being able to sustain a crop every year by having supplementary irrigation when the need arises and when the rainfall is not enough. Because our soils are very good across the country, you can produce. Our soils are very good. Our soils are very good all over the country. You cannot complain. We are, we are really pleasant with very good soil. And uh, if we have enough water, we can produce crops almost everywhere in Kenya. Indeed, and I just want to appreciate your opening remarks, gentlemen. Uh, but uh, let's also look at some of the top stories so you can also be at par with what is happening in the newsroom. Remember, these stories are what we packaged and will be developing across the day. So quickly, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has ordered former Muranga Governor Mwangi Wairia and seven other county officials to appear at its headquarters in Nairobi by 8 a.m. Tuesday. They're accused of alleged fraud involving some 140 million shillings. Earlier in the day yesterday, ESCC detectives arrested former National Museum's Director General, Dr. Mzalendo Kibunja, and four others in relation to alleged embezzlement of 490 million shillings through fraudulent payment to the ghost employees for five years. Here's Vera Omora with these details. Upon conclusion of the investigations, ESCC submitted the investigation report to the Director of Public Prosecution, who concurred with the Commission's recommendation to charge Mwangi Wairia, former Governor County Government of Muranga, Patrick Kagumo, former County Secretary, Jen Wanjiro, Director Top Image Media Consultancy, David Miner, Director Top Image Media Consultancy, David Miner and Jerry, Director Top Image Media Consultancy, Jen Kimani, Director Value View Limited, Solomon Kimani, Director Value View Limited, and Peter Muturi, the personal assistant to former governor. However, Azimio leaders on Saturday defended Mwangi Wairia after a statement released by ESCC indicating that the former governor Muranga and seven other suspects were involved in malpractices in 2014 that led to the loss of 140 million Kenyan shillings. Wairia, who failed to attend the Vihiga chat service later after learning of the arrest that awaited him, took the first place he got at the Kakamega church service to speak his mind. Serikali ya imanyani kasi satani, walifanya mkutano jana, wakaweka press conference, ati natalajiwa kushikwa, ati kwa sababu mwaka wa 2014, nikuwa mwaka moja kama gavana, sababu nikuwa mwaka kumiku, ati tulifanya matagazo kwa magazeti na kwa runinga, tukiongerea mambo ya serikali ya ugatuzi, Wairia and the other suspects have been instructed by the commission to report to the ESCC headquarters by Tuesday, 16th April 2024, 8 a.m. The suspects being charged with a number of offenses including conspiracy to commit an offense of corruption, unlawful acquisitions of public property, conflict of interest, dealing with suspect property, money laundering. Two days later, ESCC has made arrest on four National Museum officials, Mzalendo Nyaga, former Director General National Museums of Kenya, Oliver Okinyi, ICT officer, Weekly Fongata, accounts officer, Oscar Moura, in charge of recruiting of employees. In this particular case, uh, the suspects are five, so there is one yet to be arrested, and that is the Director of Human Resources at the National uh, museums of Kenya, one uh, Mr. Stanvers Ongalo Opinja, Mr. Stanvers uh, Ongalo Opinja, who is believed to be at large, is directed to report to the commission within 24 hours 
in order to be processed to face charges. The five are being charged in relation to embezzlement of 490 million Kenyan shillings used to pay ghost employees at the National Museums of Kenya for five years. Vera Mora, KTN News, Nairobi. Well, we go beyond the news. The question is, what next? And a bit of further analysis into that. Remember, these are people in power. These are voices in authority. These are people Kenyans donated power to. Let me start by Honorable Bayer on that issue. They're saying Wairia is in trouble. So is Kibunja. Now, what I, what I want to say is that uh, people who have been given uh, authority to work yes. and uh, powers have been not donated to them by the people, should be held accountable right. uh, for the actions or inactions while in office. And um, in, in this case, uh, uh, the National Museum is one of those uh, um, uh, institutions in this country that has for many years had a good name uh, for the country because of tourism and many other things. But when you have people who are in power, the National Museum, who want to wreck it, who want to destroy it because of selfish interest, I think let the law or t take its charge. Uh, for the Wairia case, my mm -hmm. thoughts on the Wairia case is that uh, if, if you are governor, you need to take responsibility for what you do. And uh, if, if uh, he has nothing to hide, uh, Governor Wairia, why doesn't he just go present himself, make his statement, and let uh, the courts decide uh, ab about the whole thing? But if you see he's trying to dodge and try to use public fora to defend himself, there is a very good place to defend himself, the courts. And uh, the court of public opinion will not help him on this matter. And he's just trying to play politics with an important issue. The people of Moranga want to know what happened to their money. But, but Mashima, this is not the yes. first time we're seeing, uh, you know, politicians use public courts yes. um, to air their views. Is yes. it good for one person and not for the other? Have we not had these conversations where you politicians would use public courts yes. to pretty much um, air some grievances rather than just following what we have in the Constitution? You see, the, one, one of the things that I, I, I like about this system, yes, you can use the public courts, you can go out there, hold public rallies and say whatever you want to do, but there's one place you must go to defend yourself. And I think if you've been given responsibility as a governor, you have a duty of care for the resources that have been put in your hands. And if you do not uh, use that, the Constitution is very clear. There are institutions that will audit right. you. There are institutions that will hold you accountable. One of them is the Auditor General, who will give a report of the things that you have done. Those things that cannot be captured by the Auditor General, the um, uh, ESCC, people report matters there, and they will want to hold you accountable. So I, I want to tell politicians that uh, it's, it's, uh, the public court this, this, in this country does not help you. Uh, in fact, the governor area is better off keeping quiet and uh, sneaking into ESCC and uh, trying to defend himself there, other than coming out there uh, in a church and trying to defend the church. However, all it is will not defend you for things that you have done that are untoward uh, to the people that you, you, you oversaw uh, resources for. All yeah. right. Yes. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Mutunga, you also amount as a politician. I mean, is this new? Because there are other things and questions surrounding even our institutions that we trust. He's talking about the Auditor General, the EACC. And Kenyans have even come forth to say, we see so many of these cases. Are we sure that they will be followed to the latter, accountability shared with the Kenyans? And if there are anything, you know, anything to recover, resources will be recovered. Uh, Kenyans have been waiting for too long to, to see the effect of uh, EACC. And I think uh, it's high time EACC actually did its work. What we have witnessed over time is that uh, the, there is also all this insinuation that EACC does not do its work to the completion, that they do not have sufficient credible evidence that would stand a case in, case in court of law. Uh, uh, these are alleged embezzlement. So alleged my, yeah, my, 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 my word to EACC is that they need to concretize some of these cases. That's first, first and foremost. Secondly, when you're given a public office, you are exposed to public scrutiny. Okay. Whether you leave the office 10 years later or earlier, I don't know, 
uh, you will still be followed because there is need for uh, the people to know exactly what you did. If you did a good job, then of course it will be published as a good job. I wonder sometimes why people don't complain that they have been uh, reported to have done extremely well. Mm. When something small comes up, they want to go to a public court, they want to seek public sympathy, they want to harness their kin around them, they want to get their communities involved. The communities were not involved in, the, in planning to pay and go to workers. The communities were not involved in uh, paying to like this top media, top image media agency, and so on and so forth. Community entrusted through the law, entrusted mm. these people with the office to run it, and deliver services. And in the process of delivering services, people configure uh, ways and means of getting money out of the system. And that is what I think needs to be curtailed in this country. That's what has really not happened. Right. We need serious scrutiny of the office bearers, the responsibility bearers in this country need to do their work exactly the way they're supposed to do it. And they need to know that even if you leave office, you can always be followed. Mm. And there is nothing political about our work done and planned by people within an office. Political statements will not help. Indeed, saying political statements will not help. We're looking at United by Fear Factor on the screen, so we'll of course get into that analysis again shortly. Uh, I want to appreciate all your feedback coming in, of course, overwhel overwhelmingly on our social media platforms at KTN News. Keep sending them as we also hear the comments of our panelists this morning on the current affairs developing at KTN News. Uh, this is the morning prime. Let's also look at... Um, other stories, but before so, uh, doing so, I want to appreciate another very key guest in studio, Honorable Anthony Kibagendi, who is the Member of Parliament, Kitutu Church South. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the show. Good morning, and thank you for hosting us. How are your constituents doing? Uh, Kitutu Church is fairly well, other than the systematic oppression of the Kenya Kwanza administration. We are doing well, and we are surviving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Systematic corporations of the Kenya Kwanza. Oppression. <laughs> Oppression. Oppression. <laughs> yes. All right. Mm. Mind sharing further because some panelists here are amused by the opening remarks. You know, we, we have uh, a government that doesn't realize that everyone pays taxes. Right. Uh, their, their appointment of, uh, of, uh, to jobs, jo job opportunities that come up that uh, Kenyans are supposed to get are skewed towards two, three communities. And uh, even within my community, the, the very few that have gotten the opportunities, uh, it is organized in such a manner that it goes to two, three uh, uh, clans. Is that, it? Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm very factual. Mm. I'm not like uh, this fearful legion of uh, Kenya Kwanza members of parliament. We tell it as it is. Uh, and hence, uh, we call it oppression. Even in terms of development, uh, two constituencies are getting a bulk of everything uh, that comes to the, to the region. Kitutu Church South, the constituency that has uh, the least number of uh, Tamak roads gets the least. Uh, there is some allocation called special allocation for constituencies that have lagged behind in terms of uh, uh, rural access roads. We get nothing. Others get two, three hundred million. Uh, you know, it is an oppressive regime. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, Anthony Kibagede is uh, was a good guy until uh, he decided to join uh, people who have always uh, used lies and uh, propaganda. Uh, to to uh, propel themselves forward, but I want to tell him that uh, it will not help him as a member of parliament. You know, as a I member don't need of parliament, help. you you require to know where resources are and resources come into parliament. They're shared in parliament, and if they uh, the people of Kitutu Chache have a member of parliament who slips throughout in parliament and has no idea what goes on in the budgeting process and he cannot fight for his constituents in parliament to have allocations. I have never heard his voice during uh, budgeting. Uh, the you only say he never heard his voice. Yes, yeah. he has that been is a in little parliament. reckless uh, he has for, for a member for, of parliament to serve the second term. For one and term. he knows when he says, uh, when, okay. let me when he says, let me no, we have, there finish. are certain things we're let not allowed finish. to go. When, when uh, <laughs> All right. a, a, a member of parliament <laughs> who is serving his second term says he has never had my voice. Uh, yes, and that you sleep uh, in, in, uh, in the budget. You know, you know, during the you know, budget. During the budget. You know, you know my constituents, my constituents, 
No, that is the most reckless utterance <laughs> from this wonderful uh, gentleman here. My constituents know how seriously I fight. What I'm talking about is special location is done by the CS in his office. It is not done in parliament. And he knows that this group of members of parliament are psychophants. They do not and un they do not understand <laughs> such, <laughs> some of these things. It might be unfortunate to call him a psychopath. He is. He is. When he says when 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 he says that I sleep in Parliament, I'm a fairly young man. There is no way I can sleep in Parliament. Okay. And when during the budget making process, we are all involved. We are all involved, not just in Parliament, even at the committee level. And that we follow to the letter. Most members of Parliament do. Beca just because I have said mm. that this government mm. is oppressive, this government systematically sidelines some certain constituencies and certain regions, he should not quickly use that to try and, and, uh, uh, and, and discredit my efforts in parliament and try, you know, that is the, that is their only way of fighting back. They All say, right. oh, now, he, in like parliament he's like late. Like Even his, uh, his, uh, the majority leader, when he visits uh, regions, uh, uh, like one time he went to, he went to Wamboka's constituency. It is the same language they use. That is the language they use to try and silence opposition MPs who tell them the truth. Let's, let's give him a chance to rebuttal. Uh, I want and to then say this. Uh, you see, uh, the hand side of the parliament is available. The hand side of parliament is mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had the budget, the budget, previous budget. Right. And uh, it came to parliament. And all projects, by the way, Aki, all projects that are done in this country are in the... Uh, in, in the, the extracts of, of, of parliament, the budget, you know, and uh, you'll see who has been allocated, which constituency has been allocated, what, you see all that, you know, in the budget. Uh, the answer is available. I, I did not see, and I, 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 I want to challenge Atuti Kibagendi to give us right. a hand side where during the budget processing, where we have committee of um, supply, you know, where we have, uh, co you know, all those committees that are done during supply, you know, there's something in budget called supply. You know, and uh, we supply money now. Our parliament supplies money to every department, every ministry, every all that. I want to challenge him to produce Hansard, okay. where he has at the Committee of Supply, where he has actually picked out issues about the budget for his constituency. And he has said, I want this amount of money put in this and this, and parliament has refused, mm. you know. So when he talks about an oppressive regime, mm. you know, uh, we, we have had this story for many years, where people who do not want to work hard want to, to blame other communities. And who wants to split. You can hear he has split the country now into, you know, three communities. Then he goes to his community and starts splitting mm -hmm. it into uh, this, co this, this constituency. Very soon he will start splitting the kisses into, you know, Mugirango, Bomachoge, and all. He will even go to his village and start splitting his village now into this clan this and this clan. Foresee. And this, this is what I foresee. Okay. But I want to ask him as a first time member of parliament and a progressive young man, and, you know, I went to a, 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 a state in uh, the United States. And uh, he, he has a name there. I don't know whether for good things or bad things. He fairly seems to be an understanding person. But I, I think he needs to start looking at what he needs to do for his constituency. And use parliament, the platform of parliament, to fight for resources to mm -hmm. go to his people, for employment, for all that. But you say, you know, employment is um, given to a few people. If you look at the employment statistics in this country, and I have had that opportunity to look at them, they will say, one, this tribe has this number of people in public service, in teacher service commission. But I also want you to look at proportionately in terms of population in this country. If you look at the Kikuyus, they are majority in terms of population. Mm -hmm. But you also translate into majority in public service. And there's nothing wrong uh, completely with that. All right. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you look at the statistics of this country, you see population versus people in public service. And I, I, I am Bob, satisfied. I, I just want you <laughs> to hold your horses. We are coming back. <laughs> yes. We're just beginning the show. And Dr. <laughs> yes. Mutunga, allow me to come to you. <laughs> yes. Um, because I want to take a quick story, but perhaps you want to just um, let me, let me touch on uh, this uh, yeah, commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think it is time uh, Politicians desisted from Politicians leaving here yeah, ourselves okay. now. We, we, we took our roles very seriously because one of, the, one of the roles of a politician is to look at what goes to your back end, what goes back to your people. 
uh, when we go lobbying, it doesn't mean that we go, you know, we go engaging in policing our people with statements. It is extremely wrong for a politician, instead of fighting for your people to get what to share to a share of the national cake, you can only please them by telling them how much you are representing them by using the wrong ones. I want to say this. I want to pick Kibagendi's uh, honor of Kibagendi's uh, statement. He did not say that the kisses are not getting positions. No. He said the kisses are given positions selectively, which means this government actually is not doing the wrong thing. If the kisses are giving posi positions and they decide to distribute in them the way they feel is best for them, I think they should restrict that conversation and kissy and deal, deal, deal with it there. The second issue is that when you go lobbying, you don't lobby, uh, you lobby a government to give you. Uh, the they idea is when you go to the ministries, can we finish? You can you give others a chance to finish? <laughs> because Please, we we'll give you the don't, time. We are all paying taxes. Taxes. Yeah. We all taxes. You, we are all paying taxes. We are all paying, yes, I'm <laughs> saying we are all paying taxes. There's something that our, our, our honor buyer said, which is important. Yes. Uh, if you go to the prisons in this country, you'll find the greatest population is Kikui. If you go to the church, you'll find the it, 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 it basically they are, they are more than the others. So that's important. Do you important. have a rough estimate, uh, uh, statistics perhaps? No, not necessarily, but okay. the proportions will tell you. Mm. Every, everywhere you go, you'll find there are more. If you go to business, you'll find there are more. If you go to farming, you'll find there are more. So, because there are more in this country, so okay. we should appreciate the fact. So the proportionate uh, treatment for every community is there, really. Whenever you see, I, I saw the other day, I saw uh, a Gazette notice, and I was, was a little bit alarmed. Mm. Because in that Gazette notice, there were about eight Kisi names and only three from other, uh, other regions. It is last week. So sometimes you wonder, when you make some statements, make it from, make them from background of information. Now, the other issue is the effectiveness of our polity. That's what we need to look at. What's the effectiveness of you being a member? What have you brought to your people? Right. And you cannot say that the government is there to share resources. The government is guided on what to share. You cannot know whether I need a, a warehouse or whether I need a kettle dip in my village without me saying. I have to say that. And the uh, Honorable Bayer said very clearly, the hands hand is very clear. I also can confess, really, I haven't had this gentleman on the floor. I haven't had him. Okay. Maybe Thank here you. he speaks, but I haven't seen him on the floor. As strong and as powerful as he's coming out now. As strong and as powerful as, as he's coming, coming out, out on this right now. Not on the floor of the house. All right. Uh, and he needs to do a lot more of that so that he may also be recognized as somebody who is representing our people. Gentlemen, you do understand that what we're doing here is very important, that we hold you all to account, because that is why I started by asking you how your constituents are doing. Yeah. Before we hear the one voice against the, of course, the incompetent CSS, what are members of parliament doing? Allow me to take this very key story as we continue, Honorable Kibagendi. I'm sure you'd also you, want to... I hope you'll allow me to respond to this because this is careless, reckless for members of parliament. And right. it, is the only, it is the only way they, they, they know how to... They, they try to put us up against our constitution. So then I will do the, that for sure. The, I will do that for sure. Allow me to just take yes. this story okay. and then I'll come back to you. And uh, Kisi Governor Simba Arati claims his life is in danger, calling on the government to enhance his security. Arati claims the police are working with unknown and unnamed top politicians in the county to plant illegal guns in his rural home to establish cause to arrest him. Arati, who recorded a statement at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations headquarters, said he has a target on his back, courtesy of his political detractors. As KTN's Emmanuel To explains, a leaked audio clip of a senior police officer in Kisi plotting a scheme to contain the governor has raised concerns in the region. <laughs> For a few months now, the wrangles between Kisi Governor Simbarati and National Assembly Chief Whip Silvana Sosoro have continued to hit the headlines with the governor accumulating more political enemies by the day. And Monday, the governor, who was accompanied by a team of senior lawyers, arrived at the DCI headquarters along Kiambu Road to record a statement with claims his life was in danger. Governor Arati's life is in danger. It's not just about persecution by the system but we believe that his, his, uh, his life is in danger. Governor Arati has lodged a complaint with the DCI against the DCI so we want to see the action that they take because uh, the alternative is to take the law into our own hands.
in a leaked audio clip that has gone viral on social media, a certain senior police officer is heard explaining the lengths the security officers were willing to go to deal with the governor whom they accused of being a thorn in the flesh. In the five-minute clip, the officer reveals a plan to plant some guns in Arati's home before procuring a search warrant that will link him to illegal activities. A CCIO in Kisi is recorded giving instructions and giving insights into how uh, guns, uh, firearms, and other things are going to be planted on Governor Arati. He's no longer able to execute his functions as a governor domiciled in Kisi, because that is where the threat is. So these threats are affecting the ability of the governor to execute his functions. Arati's appearance at the DCI comes a day after the Odium party castigated alleged plans to harm the first time governor, asking the government to move with speed to protect him. It is a scheme to bring false charges, fabricated charges, and thirdly, to make up a case against Simbarati. We have lodged the complaint. They've assured us there'll be some action, so we went to await that action. So we'll give you a copy of the statement, which then you can share. Arati has in the past few days been embroiled in bitter wars. The recent incident involving education CS Ezekiel Mashogo and the county commissioner. <laughs> Police are still investigating a shooting incident at an event attended by Governor Simba Arati at Boikanga Ward in South Mugirango constituency in early January. Emmanuel Tor, KT News, Nairobi. Gentlemen, welcome back. Let's hear from Honorable Kiba Gendi. What is happening? Uh, first, uh, it is true that uh, the what I can call the provincial administration, uh, the CCIO uh, in Kisi was recorded. Uh, I have the clips here, uh, planning on how they will deal with Simbarati. And the voice is verified uh, that that very, is him? Okay. It is verified. It is her intonation. It is her accent. And uh, uh, she hasn't come out to say no. Uh, and uh, even some of her officers have have uh, distanced themselves from uh, what uh, she has been planning. And this is the typical uh, Kenya Kwanzaa system of trying to uh, uh, silence their critics. This is the typical Kenya Kwanzaa style of dealing with those who tell them the truth. Some of us uh, at one time, were, uh, our, our security uh, bodyguards were taken away because we speak our minds and we are here to represent the people. Governor Simbarati has had issues with the CS for education. Governor Simbarati, you know, has had issues with uh, the, the chief whip uh, because of his stand. And it is that gathering that is trying to come up with ways of uh, uh, dealing with uh, him. And uh, uh, because there are weak uh, people that cannot uh, fight with ideas. Uh, unfortunately, the, for the, the sake of way, the viewer, when you say, you cannot assume the viewer knows these things. <laughs> well, when you bring such allegations... Which allegation? I'm being realistic. Well, okay, which You've issues does he have? Because those there, are not really There are no details. issues. He doesn't have issues with the... ESCC doesn't okay. have issues with you anybody. mentioned they had issues with the CS education yes okay. the, 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 it is political mm. but now they think because they have access to the criminal justice system they want to use it to silence him they want to use it to push some of us to get into this uh, I continually remind you it is an oppressive government even him when he meets me outside there he keeps telling me you have to come back you cannot you have to be you have to come back to Kenya Kwanzaa or we will deal with you and the only issues they'll raise, the only issues they'll raise is to try here and say, we didn't see you speak in parliament. Let me tell you, the good thing about uh, parliament is, each time you speak in parliament, they 
the, the, the members of the Hansa mm. you sometimes tell, tell them, cut for me that clip, I send it to my people. Mm. And I always cut and send to my people. And they know that we have been fighting for resources. Look here, what they were saying about resources. Number one, do we lobby for CDF? Do we lobby for CDF that me, I'm, in, I'm from uh, uh, Kilifi, give me this amount? Do we? No, we don't. There's an amount called, uh, in, in Kera called uh, 22%. Mm. Do we lobby for it? No. It is sent to every constituency. There's an amount called 10%. Do we lobby for it? No. It is sent to every constituency. Now, the amounts that are held by the national government and CSS that they use to play politics, what is trying to tell me you need to lobby, is what they, they, they want me to go and do what? Go and beg, go to uh, join Kenya Kwanza that is oppressing Kenyans so that I can get those opportunities. I'm not going to do that. Okay. We will work with what is available and what is rightfully for uh, the Kisi people and Kitutu Church South. I'll continually speak here because this is the platform I'll have to actually speak comprehensively. Let me talk about job opportunities. Since independence, the Kisi community has never lacked a permanent secretary, ever. It is the first time that we have been sidelined. And then they'll tell you, we have given you board opportunities, board members uh, and uh, council members. While the, some communities are getting permanent and pensionable jobs, yeah? The are, are you saying ethnicity is... It, there is, is enormous ethnicity. It, it might look and like... The, and the, look you don't here, want to lose the Kenyans here. in the line of ethnicity. No, no, no. Kenyans, no. Understand this. Okay. This is very objective. And allow me to be very clear about it. Even the committee, a, a, a parliamentary committee said, look here, this is unfair. You cannot get a thousand uh, opportunities to employ people, and out of a thousand, you give 700 to two communities. Right now, as we speak, teacher promotions, right. it has been skewed to favor two regions. Police recruitment, it is skewed to favor two, and it is... Uh, which it, regions look are you talking about? So that I even can the understand NCIC, even Where are you NCIC, getting your report from? Even NCIC. Yeah. Looks like, as a journalist, you also need to no, do no, a bit of research. I, 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 I need, need, need data. There is data. There is data. data. There is data. I just want to refer to the data you're the, referring to. The, you want me to help you Indeed. find it? You Will you wait for me? Because each time you give these people an opportunity to speak, they lie to Kenyans. That is their profession. You hold them to account. Kenya Kwanza has mastered the art of lying to Kenyans. But luckily enough, we get these opportunities and speak to these issues. Look here, when I say mm. the Kisi community has been sidelined, I've given you an, a, 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 an example of PSS. The only thing they're throwing at us okay. are board members mm. and council members in universities, for which we say it's okay, but why do other communities get permanent and pensionable jobs, and this other community is only getting boards and all this. We and, have and, a and, of and response. Yes. You will Indigo, definitely I, respond. I and then the other thing and is welcome. this. The other Giant thing is this. The no, other no. thing is this. We have uh, 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 members of parliament here, seated here, Indeed. and the only, the, the only recourse, of, uh, the only way of responding to me, instead of saying we Sometimes you take blame and say, we apologize for this and we need to do this and that. Look here. There's a road in Kitutu Church South that was designed in 2014. The road from Getare to a place called Nyatieko, Nyatieko, Iranda, Iranda, Nyakoe, Nyakoe, um, Matongo, Matongo, Mosocho, Mosocho, uh, Nyamatuta, Riverside, all the way to uh, Matieko. That road was designed in 2014. And even a tender notice given. But you know what? Up to date, because the former member of parliament was in ODM, he went to uh, an opposition party. Okay. I'm in the opposition. It has never been given resources to be done. But because these MPs suck up to this unfortunate government, they, have, they quickly go, they alter the, 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 the books and ensure only their regions uh, get developed. Listen here. No, I want to come another back thing. To you, another thing. No, 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 in terms of infrastructure development, the, the show is just they keep started. saying. They keep saying. I know it has just. And started. I will you come back. I just listen. want to. Just, 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 yeah, sure. Look here. Enough, because enough. I was, I was, I was at that point. I was, I was at that point. Whereby. Look here. They said. Look here. What they said. You say. And can I be allowed to even say good morning? Honorable Kibagen. We have two hours. You are coming back this to is you. You can't finish another right everything you want to say. <laughs> Allow in me to appreciate yeah. you using big verbose words. Um, which are just to entertain your fans. I'm not entertaining fans. I'm being realistic. Senator, thank you.
Welcome to the show. Join the group of cheaters and liars. Uh, I, I, am, I believe you will withdraw that because I'm I not a liar, I'm not a cheater. Uh. They are not liars and they are not Kenya cheaters. Kwanza. And we are, on, we are on I want to urge us national all TV. to understand mm. that the highest office is that watching this morning. So let us please allow Senator to okay. give her opening remarks. She just got here. Kenyans are waiting to hear yes. what the state of the nation is for you. What would be your opening remarks as we come back with, uh, even if you want to reply to a few things that Honorable Kipagendi has said, please take the floor mm -hmm. and uh, you can start us off. Karim. First of all, good morning and thank you very much for having us on the show. Thank you for having me on the show. My name is Senator Veronica Miner and I come from Moranga County. I just uh, walked in when uh, Honorable Kibagedi was speaking right. and while I would uh, in essence want to introduce what I see as the state of nation, um, maybe when the shows are being done, it's always fair that uh, when a member is allowed by the, the, the head interviewer mm. or the one guiding the show, mm. that they take the cue and seed the flow because for instance we are four of us and if it goes on one person speaking nonstop, then it doesn't become a show. It becomes a, a stage where you have laid for, say, on a bookie baguette for us to come and watch him while we are within the studio, and that wouldn't be fair. So even in terms of distribution of mm -hmm. time, media time, because it's being aired to different people in right. Kenya, it's fair to be balanced in that approach. And then the use of uh, allegations like uh, these are Kenya Kwanza cheaters, that's mm -hmm. out of order. Mm -hmm. And I would hope he would that withdraw. You, you should withdraw I because not. I am not a liar. Kenya Kwanza is not a liar. It's a government that is implementing the programs that it has promised to the people. It has a whole You're manifesto, a plan. Oh, you will allow me to speak on Nabuki Bagedi, and you will respect my space as I speak, the way we respected your space. Thank you. Now, Kenya Kwanza government has a manifesto which was discussed with Kenyans. There was a dialogue in every county between Kenya Kwanza, between the president, and the people of Kenya. And out of the dialogue that was had, um, there was a robust discussion and a robust uh, drafting of a manifesto that suited the needs of the Kenyans. And what we have seen now and the frustration with the people who are in the opposition camp is the fact that because of the implementation of that uh, uh, manifesto, uh, a focus on agriculture, focus on health, a focus on programs nice. that are pushing the citizens to the next level, they are frustrated because if you look at the cost of living, which um, they were using as an arena, a dancing arena every day, you can see the fuel prices have gone down, you can see the unga prices have gone down, and, and what I'm happy about is that uh, even their party leader, the coalition leader, Mm -hmm. seems to concede that things have changed seems and to has, concede yes and has actually turned down and is actually working much more closer with Kenya Kwanza and in his bid with the AU it is Kenya Kwanza is the president himself who is leading that bid a, a point where you reach and you know it is now time for work it is time for program it's not time for, 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 for very fierce campaign. And it's sad when I listen to my brother, who worked with the president actually in his office for very many years. He worked with him when he was deputy president. I am very saddened to hear that he perceives Kisi as a region that has been left behind because there is no uh, permanent, uh, there is no principal secretary. What does he comment about the cabinet secretary? Do we not have a cabinet secretary in Kisi? The, the, the CS for education. But is he not Kisi? Or what does he perceive him to be? The cabinet secretary's position, is it not even a much more higher hierarchical position as compared to the principal secretary? So if you take some little isol isolated facts about a certain community, juxtapose them against an environment without looking at the context. When you look at the number of uh, jobs that he's talking about, mm -hmm. like the teacher, teaching positions, mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the distribution and the percentage, don't look at it in vacuum or in isolation. Juxtapose it against the population matrix, because then you are talking about percentage, so that when you're saying uh, which is the largest grouping, and I'm not saying there is justification for leaving anybody out. All right. I am one leader who believes in total inclusivity 
and I hope you have seen that even in my style as a Secretary General. I believe in total inclusivity. I believe Kenya belongs to all Kenyans and everybody must belong and not feel as though you can be locked anywhere just courtesy of the region you come from. But I'm saying the data he's giving, which he has not even given by the way, and is that there is no validation of saying uh, the two top tribes have been given the giant positions. You juxtapose them against the population. Then if there is a challenge, we discuss that challenge. We say this challenge is the one we are having, and this is how we cure the, cha the right. challenge. So for me, I would say that uh, Kenyans need to reach a point where we become more optimistic as opposed to pessimistic. All right. We've had politics of negativity. We cannot build. By the way, it can reach a situation where you can still tell the government off when you need to tell the government off, because that is the work of the opposition, but objectively so. All right. And when you tell the government off, can you come in with solutions? Because you are Kenyan. Nobody, as a leader, by the way, uh, my honorable member here, uh, or my member of parliament, has an opportunity in parliament to actually impact policy. Can we start using the platforms we have, even as honorable members of parliament? You have a platform to do legislation, as you have a platform a to do mm. oversight, you have a platform as a member of parliament to impact change, to introduce laws that even the playing ground for everybody. So let's get objective. We have a few years to deliver to Kenyans and then be judged back in 2027. Indeed, uh, allow me to take a very short breather and we'll come back because talking about using the, uh, you know, the platforms objectively for the sake of this country, remember the late Saitoti once said, there's a time that will come, not in the exact words, that this country will be bigger than any individual. Let's take a look at the soapbox this morning as we take a short breather. Watu wetu wameumia, Mwishimu Ruto, you have overtaxed Kenyans. Wameumia na wameumia na wameumia. Pale mbeleni kulikuwa na subsidy. Wakasema, subsidy ni mbaya. Wacha tuende, ati subsidy inasaidia matajiri. Sibo ndo walisema. Sasa wakasema, wacha tukapatie mkulima. Tupatie subsidy pale ya fertilizer. Subsidy ni hii tunaona hapa kweli. Na tukasema ni bottom up. Na tukafambia watu wetu tutawaleta juu tuatoe wapi? Lakini saa hii kule kwetu wakulima wangu wa maziwa sisi ni watu wa maziwa ndio nimekuja hapa kusaidia mheshimiwa wenu maneno ya maziwa tunaenda function ya maziwa ya ngombe Kwetu wakulima wetu wa maziwa wanaitishwa 5% ya kilo ambazo mtu anatoa kwa ngombe Uchunguzi ifanywe ya watarudi ofisi kama uchunguzi umemalizika Wasepa sai na wasepa sai Kwa sababu wanaletea njaa si ndio Hawa ni wale watu ambaye wanataka kuharibu wakulima wa inji. Na tunaomba ya kwamba wale watu ambaye wanafanya jambo ambaye haikubaliki katika inji. Tunaombea Mungu wale watu waweze kutolewa. Kwa hivi sasa tume ya ESC eneo hili la Nakuru imeweza kurikava na kurudisha kwa serikali mali ya zaidi ya 4.2 billion. Vile vile kuna kesi ambazo ziko kotini ambazo zinanuia kurejesha vipande vingine kama hiki eh, thamani yake yote ni 9 billion ambazo ni kesi zinazopatikana katika mahakama ya environment na land